Hey guys, Jake Breen here, Team Utah Cribs at Berkshire Hathaway Utah Properties. This is my favorite time of year. We film this video every year. We have a eight year history of predicting where the market's going to go as far as appreciation is concerned and giving you an insight into the questions most of us ask surrounding real estate. Should I buy now? Should I wait? Is the market going to crash? Is there a recession headed our way? Will that affect my pricing? Should I wait for the right house to come along? And uh, to not be too long winded, you can go back and watch our other videos, but I'll tell you this. I've got an eight year history of being within 1.75% accurate of my prediction. And it goes like this. Before I show you some graphs on the screen, you gotta understand a few fundamental things about real estate. One, most consumers, we are preconditioned to shop a certain way. Why? Everything you shop for is soon to be on sale. You can read about it online. You can order it in two seconds from Amazon. You can drive down to Costco and grab it. There's a bunch of options and we're jaded as consumers because most of the commodities we purchase as soon as we leave the store, they go down in value. Real estate does not operate this way. In fact, in Salt Lake County, with an exception of six years in 50 years, there's six where it's kind of gone down. Of course, the biggest time frame was 2008 to 2012 in the Great Recession. However, we're quick to forget the rebound that occurred. It only took two and a half years after the market bottomed out in 2012 to erase the entire downturn. So that makes a lot of people question if we now, in this seven year run up, are building another bubble. I'll answer that question as well. First, let's explore what I think is rather unique to Salt Lake and a big, big deal. It's called seasonality. What you've got to understand is when you read in the newspapers or watch articles about market appreciation and you hear, oh, last year my house went up 8%. It's not linear. In fact, it's never linear. Whether it's a down market or an up market, appreciation is never consistent and linear like my house went up 1% in January and then 1% in February and throughout the year that equaled 12%. No, it's very seasonal. And this is a unique statistic that I've tracked for years. The seasonality on the Wasatch front is consistently between the first quarter and second quarter, we see the biggest jump in appreciation for the entire year. And then we start leveling off in July and we usually decline even in an up market a little bit in the fourth quarter of the year. So let me show you this on a graph because you know our slogan here at Utah Cribs, we educate you and show you instead of push you and sell you. So you are now staring, and I know that this is a, uh, a little bit blurry, but just bear with me here and uh, I'll try to make this legible on your screen. But you're staring at a graph of Salt Lake County and three important factors when it comes to real estate. The green line is the number of listings that come available for sale. This is condos, single family, and townhomes all included. On any given quarter, green line is how many came for sale. That's here, if you can see my cursor. And we're looking at a quarterly snapshot of the last five years. The black line is the number of homes that sold in that same quarter, and the blue line is appreciation. Let's pay attention to appreciation for a moment, okay? So, as you can see on the blue line, appreciation has gone since 2015 from 235,000 to now a median price in Salt Lake of 347 at the close of 2019. But I want you to pay a little closer attention and notice every year what happens between first quarter and second quarter. If you can't read the numbers, I'll tell you. In 2015, median price from first quarter to second quarter in a 90-day period went from 235 to 253. 2016, 250 to 270. 2017, 275 to 300. Are you seeing a pattern here? Let me give you those as percentages. Yes, in a 90-day period, median price in Salt Lake in 2015 went up 7.6%. 2016, 8%. 2017, 9%. 2018, 7.5%. 2019, 6.2%. The point is, 
from the end of March until the end of June, in that 90-day period, the market increases most of the year's appreciation. Let me say it another way. Yes, if you're to buy a house at the end of uh, March or right now in end of February, based on median price, uh, last year you would have paid 325,000, and if you waited around till May or June, you'd pay 345,000. I know this is consistently a shocker for people every year. And think about how we're jaded as consumers. We are taught to wait. We're taught that things will be on sale. We're taught that if you look for a coupon, you're gonna get a better deal. And I'll be candidly blunt with you, I do this every year, and almost every, especially first time home buyer we ever engage with on our team says two things. One, I'll wait for the right house to come along. When it does, I'll feel it. And number two, I'm in no rush. Uh, you know, I'm on month to month with my rental or I'm um, at my parents. And so, you know, when the right place comes along, I'll buy it and, and I'm not in a rush. And that's fine. We're not pushy salespeople, but I got to give you a reality check. Real estate does not operate like everything else you buy. And you are in a rush if you care about money. Okay. Now, a lot of people will analyze that graph I just went through and say, well, fine. I don't want to buy during that real run up. What if I wait till the winter? The fact is, if we go back and look at that chart, um, yes, as I told you, fourth quarter usually declines, but if we see 10% appreciation in a year, fourth quarter usually retracts maybe one or 2%. Again, the point is, you're not saving to wait until the following winter, um, you're still losing six, 7% based on prior history. So the bigger question becomes, well, now we've been in this run-up since post-recession, seven years now. Um, should I just wait for it to crash? I can answer this more in depth if you want to reach out to me, but the reality is you got to analyze all the other microeconomic factors, especially here in northern Utah that are going on. One of the hottest markets in the United States. We're one of the uh, lowest unemployment states. We're one of the lowest vacancy rate states. We're still undersupplied on new construction. Um, we're still more affordable than what are a lot of our comparison markets, Denver, Seattle, Portland, a lot of Southern California markets. And we're still having massive in-migration and growth. So if you talk to any economist, any expert, they're gonna tell you that that is not the case and we have extremely low inventory. So you're guaranteed to see continued appreciation. I promise you, at least for 2020, from today, it's the end of February 2020, through the 4th of July, we're gonna see very similar to the last five years, somewhere between six and 9% appreciation. Think of that. If you're looking at a house, 300, 400,000, you could buy it now at 300, or in the next 90 to 120 days, that same house is gonna cost you 335. Apply that same math to 400, 500. And if you've been looking, you know this intuitively. You could understand without me even telling you that there are a few houses on the market, they're selling super quick, we're seeing multiple offers again, and prices are going up. So it behooves you to analyze the market and just buy now. In fact, here's the last thing I'll show you. Let's take a quick look at um, what the market has done, because I just showed you on that graph through fourth quarter. Well, let's take a quick look at um, the first two months of this year and where we're at. Okay, here you go. Um, again, I, I'm toying with software here, so hopefully this isn't too blurry. But uh, you can look at what January 2019 did. Uh, last year in January, we sold 919 homes. This year, 945. We know last year was hot. Uh, last year in January, people got 98% of what they were asking on average in price. This January, 99%. Uh, median price last January, uh, price per square foot, 148. Median price in Salt Lake County this January, 166. Are you seeing a trend here? Low inventory, price still going up, people get what, what they're asking. We're not through with February yet, um, but it was craziness last year, it was craziness the year before in spring, and it will be craziness this year. So, in summary, what are we educating you about? 
we're giving you the harsh reality that a lot of sales folk in my industry, I believe, don't give consumers. They say things like, yeah, let's go look at houses and yeah, let's wait. You, you'll feel it, you know, you'll know when, when you feel it. And oh, don't get frustrated. The right one will come on. People always say, well, don't a lot, of, a lot more homes come on the market in spring and summer. So I'll, I'll just wait for that. Uh, yeah, they do. But if we went back and analyzed the black and the green line on that graph, you'll notice that they usually touch in the second quarter. And what that means is we sell all the homes that come on the market in a 90 day period, meaning absorption increases with the homes coming on the market. And so there isn't more options for you as a consumer. Well, there is for like a day, but then they sell super quick and get multiple offers. So you gotta have your ducks in a row, you gotta be lendable, you gotta have all that sorted out and gotta act fast. That's why we've got a team of people who can one, educate you, and two, be available whenever you need us so that we can help you make educated decisions when it comes to your real estate. Have a great day.